Hi guys, Dan Hendrickson here. We are in part three of a series of professional playing through the eyes of the amateur. Now I am playing the golf and I'm playing with Lee Whitaker, who is a 12 handicap golfer. And Lee is telling me how he would play the shots. I'm not gonna change anything. I'm gonna keep it exactly the same as how Lee would play the shots. And we're gonna see how we get on for these nine holes. This is part three of a three part series. I am one over par. I've started off in part one at one over. I've shot level par in part two and I'm still one over par going into part three. Let's get out on the golf course and see how we finish. Right, Dan, I'm going to try and hide out the wind a bit. Yeah. Remember that amazing shot I invented a minute ago? The stinger. The, the, the choke down stinger drawy. We're back on that, are we? Backy punchy driver. I want you to just that. do that exact shot again. Aim out to the right, draw it round, run down the hill, on the green, one put eagle. Just left it out to the right. Just up the right hand side, like in the draw, just stayed out there. The wind kept it out there, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, just a tough shot. So it looks like we're back onto that driver stinger kind of shot. Again, it's not a shot that I've necessarily played a lot of. Lee coming from a very linksy, windy golf course down at Whitsand Bay, which we played last week, if you get a chance to go over and have a little look at that course vlog that we did. But Again, it's not a shot that I've played, and it's a shot that I've just left out to the right-hand side there. Wind kind of kept it out, didn't draw it as, um, as I was hoping. Probably struck it a little bit in the heel, which kind of kept it out there. But again, it's a shot that I would need to learn a little bit more. I don't play a great deal of windy condition golf courses, so therefore it's not a shot that I have. It's a shot that I would play with irons, but not necessarily with woods. Dan's in the trees, everybody. Yeah, the trees. Shaded in here, isn't it? Yeah, right. I'd like so to get a tan, Lee. So you've got about 80 yards to go, you've yeah. got tree trouble so you can't go aerial, yeah. so I want you to hit the 8, yeah. but, eight I want, time, yeah. but I want you to hug the right hand side of the fairway yeah. and let it come in off the right and feed down towards the pin. Landing it what, in the sort of, where, where do you want to land it? Uh, clear, you want to land it onto the, at least the fringe, you don't, you want to clear yeah, that. On the fringe of the green? No, the fringe of this first bit of fairway. So at least there, you want to be landing on the fairway, but hugging, you, hugging the, right side. the important so thing is to, shadows. yeah, the important thing is to clear the rough. Okay. That's pretty good, eh? That'll do, Dan, won't it? Well, you've given me some shots. <laughs> <laughs> So a fantastic bit of imagination there from Lee, getting me to sort of knock that shot down, really zoning in on a landing point, focusing on how the contours are gonna work, and even putting me in a position where I've got now a nice uphill putt coming up for birdie there. I'm liking the way Lee thinks around the golf course. I think it's just a case now for him of being able to execute the shots as well as he can. Uh, an excellent advice of a chip and run there, executed well. Yeah. So we're downhill. Wind's off the left, so okay. it's going to push it to the right. So I want you to do a cup and a half outside left. Cup and a half outside left, yeah. Yep, and I want you to go for six inches past the hole. Six inches past. Yeah, but only mind it's downhill as well. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are welcome. You can carry for me, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so finally we make a putt, we get a birdie out on this golf course, so we're back to level par for the actual overall score. Lee seeing that putt as downhill, I'm not sure, that was more of a slight uphill putt. You could see the way that the ball sort of ran on the short, uh, the chip shot coming down that hill, it all funnels down to the left hand side. Again, understanding those greens is obviously key and I've got a bit more understanding of how those greens work. But it's a pretty flat putt, to be fair. And I think Lee read that absolutely perfectly. I think I probably would have finished like two inches past the cup if it hadn't gone in. But six inches past, was absolutely spot on for Lee. Right, Danny boy. Yep. I want you to aim for that purple tree in the distance about here. Yeah, 
Okay. And I want you to bomb three. a big draw around the corner. Big bombing draw. Uh, yeah. Starting at that with a draw, yeah? Yeah. Or you want it landing on that? No, drawing off that. Okay. Drawing, not hooking. Okay. Just like that, Dan. Got to go, that, isn't it? Oh, I didn't even see it down. Yeah, that, so that started. That started on the purple tree and then just drew. Yeah. But it's, it's got, probably got caught up in those conifers on the left there. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. The slight overdraw. That's your fault, not mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but again, like thinking about it, okay, I would want it coming down on that tree. Like it's starting, I'm, I mean, just, if you think about the cut in the fairway. Yeah starting left of the middle and then and then with this wind and a bit of draw it's just it's done exactly what we expect it to do yeah just the start position i'd want the start position just that little bit further right just just that's all it is it was a good shot it was just uh, just overturning into that you know we were starting it too centered really okay but it was a good shot again a little bit of a misunderstanding from lee there with regards to how he knows the golf course he's asked me to hit a little draw down that hole I wanted it drawing to the middle of the fairway and that red bush that he had me hitting it at was the middle of the fairway. It was actually just left of centre there. So starting it just left of centre and then trying to turn it, bearing in mind the wind's off the right hand side as well, it was just an overturn into the conifers. We'll see how we get on when we get down there, but I wanted Lee to sort of come down into maybe the left half of the fairway, which meant I would have to have started that ball a little bit right of centre, not left of centre. Again, good shot well executed just didn't quite know probably the golf course that well to be able to make that call on that shot i mean who puts oh, themselves off there left it here, eh? right so you got one eight something what did we one say eight, four right so you got your four iron because there's a you've got like a gap between behind the ball yeah. to be able to get the club on yeah i want you to play a slingy draw into that green aiming for that tree that's like twiggy up there okay so it's got loads of bush on the top but then you can see the branches the twigs the yeah. trunk yeah we yeah. need to aim for that and draw it like a punch draw and yeah. let it run towards the green and full hit or what am i doing is this a full <coughs> hit with a four iron uh what's your four iron 200 with no one sort nine, of one nine five one nine five no you want to be sort of three quarter hitting it and let it run to, it's kind of a bit of a recovery if it gets to the green bonus if not, it's a chip on. Yeah. Okay. Well, you started at two left, but you may get away with that. It might run through the green, that. If that if it needs to catch a bit of rough, that, but... Yeah, just started left, too left. Wasn't it? A bit left. I tried, got too much on it. So a nasty little lie in between those trees, but luckily I had a shot through. Now, to try and hit that draw shot off that lie, you could see that my ball started a little bit left of where Lee wanted it to go because the ball's below my feet. I'm kind of trying to crouch in my knees to get myself into a decent lie position with the club, but to try and then hook it off that lie, it's really difficult, especially coming out of the rough. So a lot of the things that Lee's talking about there is a lot going against me. However, because I called it a fraction heavy, it kind of wrapped the club over and managed to turn it over. Let's um, let's see what the end result is with that one. I see this pretty straight. Shot though, mate. Yeah, it wasn't, you got away with that, didn't you? <laughs> so I see this coming in off the left, Yeah. but I see the wind keeping it out so on the left. Yeah, so I'm so going straight for feeling, it. Thinking about wind now when yeah. you're putting. So I'm just going straight for it, nine straight inches it. past, sink the birdie. One under par. Oh, it, did, it went left, didn't it? Yeah, there was a lot there. There was a lot of slope there. Quite a bit of slope on this green. Yeah, I had it coming in off the left. This? Just uh, hit it. Just hit it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Just hit it. Just hit it. Just did it anyway, just did it. I had that coming off the left and it did and the wind just didn't keep it out. No, there. it was it was it's quite a severe green this way. You could you can 
see that it all runs away from me. Yeah. There's quite a lot of green. I just thought the wind might keep it straighter. Never mind. So ended up getting away with that second shot, ending up on the green there. It just sort of landed up the left-hand side and then worked its way down towards the pin. Lee read a really good putt. What I like there is Lee starting to think about the wind a little bit more. I think probably because the flag stick on that hole is quite tall it looks like it bends a lot more than what the other flags on the golf course can, can do. So for Lee, he's probably seen that and sort of thought, oh, there's a bit more wind out here. We'll have to give a little bit more, sort of um, bring the break into it with the wind. I've hit the putt pretty much spot on to where Lee wanted me to start it, but ultimately the wind's not buffering it on that slope quite as much as that. But it was still a good putt and a good opportunity to make a birdie from a, you know, a, a pretty difficult situation from that second shot. Let's uh, let's see how we finish this round off. Right, done. One, three, eight. Yeah. Uh, I think it's with the wind. It's wind's helping. Yeah. So I just want you to hit a half swing eight iron, just between the bunker and between those two bunkers. So Bunk the very iron. right bunker yeah. and the very back the front just a bunker. Smooth eight iron. A half swing half eight, iron. Swing eight iron. Yeah. High or low? Uh, high. Let the wind take it. Something like that, Dan, will do. I mean, my services are available. Spot on, <laughs> Literally. I would say. <laughs> so love that approach that Lee's bringing to that particular shot. Trying to control the flight, you can see, even though he's asked me to throw it up in the air, he's taking the speed off the shot. So he's trying to get me to control the club as best I possibly can, get it onto the front part of that green and then just let it release over towards the pin. Perfectly executed, great vision from Lee to see it sort of working with the wind. And uh, let's see if we can knock it in and finish this off nicely. Good choice, I think. What we got? Oh yeah. Uh, I want you to go two cops outside left. Yeah. And I want you dying it in from the nine o'clock position. Dying the wind, in nine o'clock. Yeah, I've given you more break because the wind's pushing it in off the left. Just like that, Dan. I mean, Fell in, didn't it? I mean, like. Fell in. <laughs> there you go. I'm just. A little birdie I, there. I surprised myself. Very good. <laughs> so a good result there. Nice little birdie. Loving the way Lee has approached that part. He's sort of. He's not allowing it because it's on such quite a big slope. He's not wanting the ball to kind of get away from me there. Uh, he wanted me to die it in. And again, I love the fact that he uses the clock system with how he's going to visualize that putt coming in at nine o'clock there. Absolutely spot on. Really, really impressed the way Lee has kind of approached this particular sort of three holes. We could have ended up there being three under. We were two under for those three holes and some really, really sort of good imagination from Lee. Really impressed actually over these nine holes, how well he's done from there. Let's, uh, let's go and have a chat with Lee now and just see how he felt that particular round went. Right, we've come in out of the cold because it's blimmin' windy out there, Lee. Mm -hmm. Give me some feedback on how my score ended up, let's say, from me playing in the eyes of you. So what were you, two under, I think it was? Mm, Possibly? I, no, oh uh, yeah, birdie, finished with a birdie, yeah, yeah two, so under. two under. Um, I think it shows that I need to be a caddy, first of all, <laughs> you know, so sign me up. I think it shows that I've got the knowledge to play it, I just don't have the ability to do it. So if I, you've got the ability to play the vision I have. Um, so it makes me think what I'm thinking is right. Yeah. I just need to work on my ability to play those shots. And I think Lee has summarized that up pretty much spot on. The idea of these two series that I've put together of me playing through Lee's eyes and Lee playing through my eyes is not necessarily a course management lesson. It's not necessarily a playing lesson as such. It's just a case of Lee getting a better understanding on, number one, his vision is very, very good. Lee can actually see the shots. And I kind of put that down to the fact that he watches a bit of golf. You know, he watches a lot of YouTube golf. He watches obviously golf on Sky and watches all the top players um, around the world hitting golf shots. So he's getting some very good visions of what actually a golf shot should kind of look like and how to play these types of shots. And I imagine there's a lot of amateurs out there in the same same boat as that. The next part of it though is that the fact of the skill set, the skill level, it's great having the visions and I think that's really, really important. 
but it's then understanding the shots that you've then got to go away and play, but most importantly practice, because ultimately those shots are going to be in every sort of round of golf that we play. It's the guys that are able to go out and practice them and work on those tricky positions instead of just hitting ball after ball after ball on a range it's getting yourself out on a golf course and chucking a ball down in an awful situation and trying to practice from that that's the only way lee's going to get better at playing these particular shots but let me know put your comments down below i'd like to hear what you have to say remember if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing and as always stay safe and we look forward to catching up with you again soon